Come here, child. You gremlin. There you are. All right. How are y'all doing? How is it going? I'm booting up Steam World Quest. I got some good games lined up today. Actually, I haven't checked my email. Let me see. Build a bridge over the Niagara Falls. What? What? Oh. New, ooh. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, that's interesting. I got a press release. All right. Uh, starting up SteamWorld Quest. Good morning. It Well, it's now officially the afternoon, but I did start in the morning. I have a child here demanding a lot of attention. The people, people, people are going to take that out of context. They're going to be like, what? Bimple has children? No. I only have gremlins. Actually, only one gremlin. More like a goblin, actually. I uh, have today's microwave diced coffee. Bimp, if you scream, it will get big stretched. Um, I kind of, uh, I had to compromise a little bit. I wanted to have that, because obviously having the big poggers would be so good, but it doesn't actually work that way. Um, because having it work that way would mean I'd have to increase the maximum height threshold. And that means that it, it kind of gets jittery. Um, and it gets a bit distracting. And I already think it's kind of distracting. I like, I'm, I'm, the, my concern here is that it's gonna start to be more noticeable than the game. Like, if it's constantly moving, it might, it might kind of steal the show a little bit from the game. Um, so that's a that's my concern and i'm i'm hoping to get some feedback on that but i tried to do exactly that where like whoa you know i like but you can see like ooh, you see that's that's where it ca caps out that's the height caps out at a certain amount it's a bit more distracting than before but not a great deal. That still might be too much for me. Let me see if I can't tweak it a little bit. And I'm sorry that I'm going to be taking up some stream space with this. What I can do is I can increase the smoothing. So now it's it's a bit more subtle. And then what I'll do is I'll increase the maximum size a little bit. So now it kind of grows a bit more steadily. How is that? That's... um. A little bit less animated, but also possibly a little bit less distracting. Is this is this an, is this a good balance? I'm trying not to modulate my speech too much so that I don't uh, select for good animations. I might turn down the smoothing just a little bit. No, see, it gets jittery like kind of right away. Um, view. Balloon, balloon bimple. Oh, see, now I, I, I increased the maximum size too much. Now I can go, maybe decrease it a little bit. All right. I'm going to stop fritzing with it. Less distracting, it is good. Hard to be too distracting from a turn-based game. I mean, it's 100% easy to be distracting from a turn-based game. There's no better example of a game that people are looking for a distraction from. And that's what I'm here for, honestly. You should really go to the Coliseum. All right, I'll go to the Coliseum then. You big bully. Jeez. Hello, Kevbo. I think it adds to the stream. That's the idea. Here, my, my, um, my idea, like, the the uh, logic behind the change was that basically when I'm t when I talk the the V two gets like one good bump it gets one little jump but if I keep talking then it just stays stagnant so this was to kind of make it look like I'm talking a bit better 
which I think it does a good job. I actually, looking at it now, I think these settings are kind of perfect. But um, I'm hoping it's not too distracting. We'll see. We'll see if uh, maybe I have to tone it back a little bit or turn it off entirely. I should. I think it should deflate when your pitch goes lower, quieter, and inflates when your voice goes higher, louder. That's exactly what it does. That's exactly what it's doing. The crowd is getting rowdy. Where's that con artist? I loved it. Hey, are you the ringmaster Bob just told us about? Wait a minute. Did you say Bob, that two-timing snake charmer, better be on his way here? He owes me a dragon. Well, about that. It's dead. What? But I need a final act for this evening's festivities. Hey, you look like a tough bunch. We're not here for the show. Bob told us you might know where the Necronomicog is buried. No one, I mean, I want pancake bimble bimple when it gets low. Oh, I see. Let me see if I can do that easily without uh, ruining what I've got. It's at 58 minimum size. There we go. <laughs> Let's have this for a little while. Hey, hey, I just thought of something. I just thought of something. Hello, boys and girls. Today we're going to have a show. A magical show filled with wonder and joy. The big poggers. Poggy woggy woo. Yo. Maybe I should keep it like this. It do be a flat simple. We're gonna have a good time today, I think. Alright. Alright, let me fix it back. Alright, perfect. Back to normal. That's the normal simp, simp shape. Well, that's not the kind of information you hand out for free, but if you agree to help me out by enter entering a few fights and make a spectacle of it... You there, big green fella. How would you like... How would you feel about slipping into this sublimely dragon scale pattern skin suit? What kind of show is this again? No big deal, really. You I just have to rough up some of the locals in an entertaining manner. If we do this, it's not going to be against any of the locals. We want to face the experienced fighters, mercenaries, murderers, you name it. That's more like it. I'll set you up against the worst scum you could possibly find. And if we're the last one standing, you'll tell, tell us what we want to know. I like your style, kiddo. Deal. With an invitation to brawl, our heroes entered the fray. If you're curious about uh, what I have done to, to Bimple VTube, um, he has more to say. When you're ready to rumble, just enter the Coliseum. Uh, basically, I've applied a filter to it that does scale to sound. I think, it, I think it's working out pretty good. Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone else, welcome to our Coliseum, where a better future awaits behind the, f the next fist. There's been a slight change in today's program, but I'd say it's for your benefit. Instead of a boring, predictable dragon, I present to you Plan B and the Orphans. Is that us? Is he is he talking about us? Don't pull your punches and let the fighting commence. Today is today's stream brought to you by a really nice coffee. I'm really enjoying this coffee. So I, I, I do think that any good um, RPG probably requires a Colosseum chapter. Um, the ones that come to my mind are uh, Paper Mario and the, uh, the Thousand Year Door are, is a great example of this. As well as, um, I, I, maybe this is a spicy take, but I think um, Super Paper Mario was actually a really underrated game. I really, really like that game, and I'm sorry that it kind of, it was like the last great experiment 
in terms of uh, a Mario RPG. Um, do I want to do this? No, I don't. Why am I doing it? There we go. That's what I want. So how how is everyone doing today? How are we all feeling? Um, how did you guys uh, like the 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 souped up the, the the nicely polished thumbnail I gave the stream? Was that something that even turned up on the timeline? Like I I wanted the stream to actually have some artwork available. That, bop. Ooh, that was cool. I like that the other twin did it. Ouch. Do you like your coffee with hazel? Um, no. I, I, okay, like, I don't dislike it. Um, but let me, let me tell you a very short story. It's a very, very short story indeed. Um, I, uh, I, I bought a, a, a bag of hazelnut coffee grounds one time and the first cup of coffee I had from that I was like mm. let me see if I can find a matching uh do I have a no that's not it's not it wait I need to fix my there we go I mean that that, that works out pretty good I was like hmm that's pretty good I like that coffee that's good I like that. And then the second cup of coffee, I was like, that's still pretty good. And then the 15th cup of coffee, when I was almost finished the hazelnut bag, was like, I hate this. <laughs> and I want to die. <laughs> this is awful. Please stop. Hazelnut is not good for me anymore. <laughs> I like the thumbnail. I'm doing all right. I had to stay an extra hour at work, so I'm glad I made it in time. Nice. Hell yeah, that thumbnail was nice. I I, I think it's good. I'm gonna have I'm gonna basically do that every week. Um, how was the stream being available a day in advance? Was that like an, a nice sweet sweet spot? Just in time to remind you that the stream was tomorrow, but not too soon, so that, that you didn't forget. Again. <laughs> All right, that's what I'm talking about. Good old-fashioned fun for the whole family. Let's uh, let's up the ante a bit. Round two, fight. Round two, fight. Do 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 beep beep. Uh, it only took 15 minutes for Big to make a suit. Mm. I didn't. I wasn't. <laughs> All right. I mean, sure. Yeah. I, fair enough. I take it back. I didn't want to die. I just wanted less hazelnut coffee. You got me. That was that was inappropriate. Inappropriate humor from Bimple. You only get one per stream. One inappropriate joke from Bimple per stream. It is like they're like ca cards now, you know. Like, uh, you know, you get one spicy take, one inappropriate joke, and then the third segment is uh, is officially. I'm gonna say it now. I'm not even kidding. This is not a joke, lads. Uh, third segment is officially PG-13 hour, or however long the third segment is, because like. I'm gonna be start. I'm gonna start to play games in the third segment that are kind of spicy. Like they're they're dark, you know. They will probably um, tend to deal with some heavy themes, and um, I just don't think I can like maintain this whole like this. This is a very child friendly stream. I mean, yeah, for the most part it is, but also it's a scary world out there. And uh, should I hide away from it? I don't think so. That's not reasonable. Bro, PG thirteen third segment. Yes, it's nice. It reminded me that the stream was today. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. That's exactly what I want to happen. When you when you open up YouTube and you see that there uh, Bimple stream 
uh, this is what I want to happen. What? Right. Tomorrow is Tuesday. Tuesdays are bad, but bimple stream. So therefore, Tuesdays are pretty okay. I mean, they're still bad, but you know, at least there's a bimple stream. Um, what's he gonna be playing? Oh, hey, he's gonna he's got right. He's got the feature segment, and uh, he's gonna be playing uh, uninvited. What's uninvited? Maybe I'll check that out. That sounds like it could be fun. And then and then everyone's happy, right? Well, no, less sad. That's really it. That's it. Uh, let's let's try this. We're gonna do searing lash, doom, and then sleep, so that we get the combo. Hello, everyone. Hello, I'm a ten. Hello, Kevbo. Hello, uh, Neville. Uh, I really wish you'd save the feature segment, the last one, and do the second real game in the middle. I always fall asleep during the final game. Well, the problem with that is that um, I think I'll, I, I kind of like sandwiching the feature segment because the feature segment is very much a mixed bag. I think it's a mixed bag, and I like it like that. I like it to be a mixed bag. Um, and the problem with ending the stream with a mixed bag <laughs> is, uh, you know, it could just, like, you know, like, uh, and now it's over. <laughs> we just played possibly one of the worst games ever, and now the stream is ending. <laughs> like, or... You know, it could be great, right? It could be, you know, the roll of the dice. Maybe we play the best game ever. We've n no one's ever heard of this game, and and now I've we've discovered it, and it's like, ooh, cool. And now it's over. <laughs> it doesn't sound any better, does it? Ah. Do 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 do. Will you play Library of Ruina today? Um, no. I don't think so. Like, I still have a lot of this today. I'm gonna be making my best efforts to, um, get through... We'll probably see the third act of, uh, um, SteamWorld Quest today. But, truth be told, I don't think that we'll be seeing Library, Library of Ruina today. Why did I shuffle that? That was, like, the worst card to shuffle. It's because I'm not paying attention. That's why. Okay, we're gonna blind this guy. Um, also, I'm hoping to make some minor uh, additions to the the Bimple VTube for Library of Ru Ruina because you know it's an anime, it's a first anime game for stream, so I want to be prepared. You know, uh, I would like it. I like <laughs> like to be prepared with something special, just a little little something something, a little something nothing. <laughs> When you get to the Library of Ruin, be sure to toss that PG-13 thing out the window. Oh, no. Is that true? Oh. All right. Good to know. That complicates things slightly. Right. That game has, like, themes of, like, a like actual suicide, doesn't it? Like, heavy doses of suicide. All right. Well, I'll have to ma remember to put in a... A content warning for Library of Ruina. Thank you for the uh, the heads up on that. And uh, if anyone asks, yes, I, I I do take those things seriously. So uh, it's good to know that I'll actually have to do that. <clears throat> well, you know, sometimes sometimes the world is a, is a dank and dark place, including in in video games and. You know, I'd like to think that I do do a stream that do do <laughs> that is a, a bit more lighthearted, but um, you know, I, I I have very varied tastes, and um, like it's it's just like eventually I'm probably gonna play something that is darker or um, more adult. The unfortunate part of that is um library of ruina is a very long game is it not not that that's bad that's generally a good thing but um it does mean that we'll be playing an adult first segment for probably months 
That's if I f uh, like decide to continue with um, with Library Ruina. There is a not zero percent chance that I may just say, "Yeah, I, I understand how this game works now," and I don't like it. <laughs> I'm not a fan. That may happen. I got, I got things worse than suicide. Trains. Trains. Is there any series planned for Library Ru Ruina? No. I'm going to be streaming it. I'm not going to be doing a series. It's a stream exclusive. I don't... I, you know, like, there's very few things that I do on stream that get their own, uh, like, series or uh, even one-offs. I did do a Let's Try of Space Bandit, though. And I think I did an awful job at it, if I'm being honest, because... <laughs> Um, it got updated with some, like, uh, with a different kind of, uh, skill curve, and I was still really bad at it, and I feel kind of bad, because I'm, I'm, like, I'm probably not the person to be showcasing that game, because clearly I'm not good at it. I love trains. Our heroes defeated whatever was thrown at them and conquered the Coliseum. So where's the Necronomicog? A deal's a deal. Wait, that was the last one? Bob's got it. He's had it for ages. I've heard he used it used it to produce that moon juice of his. Typical druids. No offense. None taken. He's making the rest of us look bad, that's for sure. And that's coming from me, the guy selling him body parts. For some reason, he needs lots of them, and promised me a dragon in return. That slimy cheat. I think it's time we tighten the screws on him. I had to swap my laundry over. What game is going to be stream only? All of them. All of the games that I play on stream are stream-only games. <laughs> you can now visit the Coliseum of the Curse between chapters to fight in challenge battles. There are more challenges challenging than most normal fights, but offer increasingly spectacular rewards if you do well. Use the chapter select screen to visit. Okay, is this something I actually want to do, Kevbo? I have five challenges to do, apparently. I'll do one Colosseum chapter. Oh, wait, I should buy some cards first. Why, well, if it ain't my plan B, come back to give the old arena another go, have you? Let me tell you how this works. Last time it was a one-off deal. Bad form to let you skip ahead in line, okay? You'll start off in the minor league, same as everyone else. I'm sure you won't stay there for long, though. Each division's got its own champion and its own contenders. You earn a prize for each one you beat. Don't worry, we'll drag, you we'll drag your sorry parts out of the ring and patch you up if you get knocked out. You only get rewarded for the fights you actually won, though, and you only get each prize once. You got that? No chance to rest between fights either, so don't slack off. Gotta deliver the non-stop violence this audience, cra audience craves. Right, I've blabbed long enough. Pick a division and let's breed some mayhem. <coughs> uh, Coglin Cup? Oh, okay. So the other ones are not available. Wow, there's a lot of them. Level 50? Coglin... F okay, well, uh, let's, uh... Let's um, check out the store first. There are new cards to craft. I don't. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna be using this character ever. I'm sorry. Epidemic spreads status conditions between foes. Oh, that's actually really cool. Oh man. So I could like poison one unit, and then this would spread it to everyone else, right? Oh, that sounds really good. What about Dark Matter? Deals arcane damage to all foes equal to 25% of their current health. That sounds okay, but uh, it, it, it could very easily not be good. This re reduces their arcane and storm defense. Could be good in tandem with uh, Copernica. Oh, Inferno. Do I not have this? Inflicts burn. Stronger against burning foes. Um... Kevbo, you were telling me that this the, the the four cog or four steam ones are generally not worth it, right? Is this one of those ones? This one raises the Caprica's fire damage. This could be worth getting. I'll grab this one and then I can always buy parts for the other ones. Let's see, uh spike trap. Deals piercing physical damage to all foes and may inflict bleed. Grants one ally a thorny shield and regeneration. So they have a little bit of healing. 
Um, this requires what? Uh, oh, I, I need more foul liquid. So let's buy some foul liquid. Uh, if you if all your games are stream only, I can unsubscribe from your channel and just show up here Tuesdays. Solid. A Coliseum is way bigger than five challenges. They unlock with every main story chapter you beat. They get pretty challenging, but none of the rewards are mandatory for beating the game. I got a whole speedrun tactics spreadsheet for that game for you to hunga uh, <laughs> bunga through hard parts. <laughs> Yo, I appreciate the, the the effort is is very very appreciated. Thank you so much. <laughs> so you can unga bunga through the hard thing. <laughs> Jesus. Can be super strong, but it's mostly if you're building a fire oriented party with Copernica and Armilly. Otherwise, I'd probably stick to either tier two. Or, yeah, all right. So what I'm going to do, though, uh, is I'm going to probably stick another poison in there. And then Epidemic will be able to spread poison to all of the other allies. And then I also have sleep. So maybe will Epidemic also um, do the sleep cards? Let's do upgrade also. Do do. Oh, this is, uh, requires way too many parts. Wait. Oh, 70. What? 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 Does this seriously require 70? And I only have eight? All right, we're getting to some really ridiculous prices here, aren't we? Why is it this one only requires 10? 30? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm like full lightning right now, aren't I? No, I'm, I'm actually fire right now, so, uh, okay. Wow, this does 617 ice damage. What does Epidemic do? This card has no available upgrades. Oh, interesting. I don't think I can basically afford anything. Oh, never mind. I can afford things I don't want. Um... Upgrade to increase duration. This might be worth doing. I don't know. I, I think I, I'll just do the Coliseum. I probably don't need to, like, buy anything because, uh... Like, um... This, this first round is probably going to be really easy. I'll do one round... One, uh, challenge, like, bout of this and then I'll move on to the next chapter. Do 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 Um Different areas give you different crafting drops. You're in an area that gives like no pages for drops, sadly. Oh okay. That's good to know though. Yo, this this iced coffee is it's really doing it for me today. I don't know why. I do really appreciate uh, Colosseum sections to games. I don't know what what it is about him. It, it's there's something just very satisfying about it conceptually. Oh, that Costa gear. Oops. Oh, we can also, um, oh, I forgot, I didn't put Epidemic in the deck, shoot. But I can probably spread Blindside as well. So I didn't get enough to do anything, so we're just gonna do a normal attack, and then I guess I'll Blindside as well. Do do do. Take down. Okay, um, Axe Chop, Doom. Blind side, I guess. Um, I'm not really getting any like steam generating effects right now. There you go. Uh, there we go. There's there's a steam generating effect. 
Um, I guess... I don't know. <clears throat> I'm, I'm struggling a little bit here. Like, this, this is an easy fight, and I'm trying to micromanage it for some reason, or optimize it. Oh god, these guys might actually be a problem. And then I've, they've reshuffled my cards. Uh, we don't... Okay, this is... That's better. Actually, okay, this is perfect. Let's try and take out one of these lads before they explode. Did they... No, they didn't heal. I thought they healed for a second. Uh, for a second. What I'm gonna do is put one of the other ones to sleep. I was gonna run my first D&D one-shot. Couldn't get people to show up last week. And D&D Club for Nerds. I got the plot hooks and encounters, but I forgot one thing. The world. <laughs> what what world are you, is it taking place in? If they're blind, can they miss their explosion? Like, can they miss, miss their, their big attack? Yes, they can. That's ridiculous. Uh, you were, wasn't he making his own campaign? No, no, uh, he was just doing a one-shot. He told us all about it last week. It's, it really sucks that no one showed up. That's like, that's like the most frustrating thing as a DM. People don't realize how much work DMing is. Not familiar with any sitting, so I'm writing my own continent and map. Oh, that's so much more work than it's worth. Just set it in Forgotten Realms. No no one can argue with Forgotten Realms. It's it's generally the most like recognized area. Nice. Blind and poison ROP. Oh no, I know, that's why they're in this deck. Ouchies. Don't worry, I'm gonna blind them, but I'm just uh, doing my combos while I have them. The problem is that blindside and poison are both frogo abilities, and uh, that means I, I have to wait <laughs> a little bit. Okay, so there's one. They're perfect. That's like the perfect combo right there. So guys, um, I'm a I'm a tan. Shut your shut your ears for a moment, guys. I've been playing this really really good deck builder, and I um, I'm I'm kind of tempted to do a series on it. I have a let's try coming out probably this week for it, um, but I, I actually think it's my new favorite deck builder of all time, which is a pretty hefty recommendation because I really like Monster Train. Monster Train I think is like one of my favorite games ever. Um, but anyway, it's called Vault of the Void. <clears throat> it's only like $10, which I find is absurd. I kind of want to do a little bit of it on stream, but like, you know, it's also, it's a, 
the, I think the worst thing about it is it's really long. Like, to beat an actual game of it cost, it spent, it, it's like two hours. It's like a really, it's for some reason it's a very long game. I think it hurts it a little bit. Um, but I, I really like it and I'd like to probably do a series for it. One that you can create your character, right? Um, no. No, not that I know of. It's it's much like a lot of the other deck builders. You just kind of pick a character, and then they have two different ways of playing. Like, two, two play styles. So you pick a character, and then you pick, pick a play style. But you don't really do any character creation. I'm a dead. <laughs> Both of what create I, I are we thinking the, the same one because I weren't you playing rogue book or something uh, wasn't there there's another deck builder that you were playing Andrino right or are we thinking of the same one a couple of interesting things I, I find this I find uh, this the vault of the void game pretty interesting because like it does some weird stuff that I haven't really seen in a lot of deck building games like it has weird like flare animations for uh you know for certain things like um that happen in game like you can you can unlock animation styles and i just think that's a little bit funky it's almost like a magic the gathering thing shoot all right this works i guess hey hey colin how you doing think i'm a hypocrite because I'm actually, you're currently hyped for another deck, deck builder. Well, the thing about um, Library of Ruina is it's not really like a deck builder. I know it, it has, it's like a card playing game, but you more or less like build your deck before you start like fighting something, right? I guess when I say deck builder, I mean like you, you accrue cards and you build your deck as you're playing the game, which is generally a roguelite um, playstyle. This is this is good. Perfect. I think your campaign will be great. I think so too. Uh, confuse it with Hadean Tactics. I want to try Hadean Tactics. I might uh, I might pester the 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 devs for a key because I'd like to cover that game. Nice. Leech. Nice. I'm doing alright. My Steam Deck is available to purchase now. Yo, let's go. Which uh, which one did you get? I've been uh, I've been really enjoying my Steam Deck. I haven't done any content on it because I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> I don't think there's much reason for me to do content on the Steam Deck. Um, I was kind of thinking of like, oh, maybe in my Let's Try videos, I'll like, um, add a little excerpt at the end that's like, also, this game plays, like, this well on the Steam Deck. But honestly, even then, I'm like, eh. Was Dominion the first deck builder? I know collectible card games have been around forever. Yes, I think that Dominion was the first deck builder, and that's why it was so insanely popular. We had this, uh, we had a short conversation about it last week. I can't remember who was it. Oh, yeah, it was Ben that said they don't uh, like uh, Dominion, which is totally fine. Um, like, it's it feels um, archaic by today's standard. Like, you know, we've, we've had... The deck building genre has come a long way since it started. So it's fair to say that uh, there are design elements in Dominion that feel kind of... Um, they haven't aged well, is, the, is what I'll say. Like, for one thing, it's, a weird, it's weirdly a Euro game. Like, it really is just about collecting points, which I think that a lot... I don't know what it is about board games or card games that um like euro style games are a lot about collecting points and not a lot else 
Um, and Western, like, I, I don't know, like, I don't know how to put it. People in the West generally don't like that play style. They definitely, they, I, I, I would, I'd say it's fair to say that people who play in the West who play board games prefer play styles that are more aggressive. You know, like, I, I fight you and I kill you and I do damage to you and I steal your cards and I also, you know, make your deck bad. You know, like, those are the kind of things. And there's a little bit of that in Dominion, but mostly at the end of the day, you win by collecting a lot of points. And I think that that, that, that just doesn't work for some people. And that's totally fine. I l really like Euro-style games because I do like collecting points and I also think that like a lot of euro style games just have a really good game design um or i guess a better way of saying that is they are very well designed but um yeah i don't know like you know i've played games like twilight imperium and uh you know like what, what is the most popular western board game i mean magic the gathering is probably the most you know famous and popular ccg and it's definitely like i kill you i do this to you you're bad get wrecked fool go, go back to the trash uh you got the most expensive one. Oh, nice i one of the, the the most the most encouraging thing i'm hearing about the steam deck is that even the cheapest one is actually really good i i also splurge for the most expensive one but i don't think i needed to it's it was basically my purchase for like the year. <laughs> like that, this was instead of going on a vacation, which I never do anyway. So never mind. Who's healing? Who is this guy healing? Do I have to kill this guy first? You know. Uh... I guess I can only do this. Hey, Ben, we were just talking about you. <laughs> Hello to Cauliflower and Mimi and all as well. Did I miss Cauliflower? I think I missed someone. Or is that Colin you're talking about? <laughs> this is the single most expensive thing I've bought in like five years. Same. I mean, you know, it's like... I, I, it's like buying a PC, basically, which I have I have done. <clears throat> Let's just do like a chop. Wait, what? We were talking about Dominion, and I remembered uh, that last week you were saying that you don't like Dominion, which don't worry, is is totally fine. But uh, we were talking about Dominion because. The topic of deck builders came up. Also, Ben, you are a fan of deck builders, right? Just not Dominion? You might like uh, Vault of the Void, right? Unless you've already been playing it. In which case, I'm also playing it. <laughs> I re I I'm sorry, I'm just like, I want to sing the praises of that game because it's seriously impressive to me. Because, like, it does a lot of things differently, but also the same from a lot of deck building games. Like... Um, it lets you just keep your hand. Every single deck builder game ever is like, no, discard your hand. Except for this one, strangely. So I'm playing the two games where you don't discard your hand. Um, but then also you keep your energy as well between rounds. Like, it, you know, every, every deck building game has energy. But this is the only one I've ever seen that's like, you keep your energy. You keep your cards if you want to. Um, also, you don't have to, like, go out of your way to remove cards out of your deck. This is a free ability that you get between combats. Which is a, just, like, everything in it feels like a rebellion of standard deck-building games. Which is really cool. It's really cool to see a game, like, kind of, um, stretch the medium a little bit. I mean, I really like it initially, but it doesn't let you cash the checks you write while playing it. If that, no, that totally makes sense. Playing for points in video games is a mechanic from 30 to 40 years ago when games were about one megabyte in size and couldn't do anything more. 
Well, yeah, but that's that's video games. Board games a little bit different. We're still playing games with points. Like um, a lot of my favorite uh, games are um, designed by someone named Uwe Rosenberg, who's just like you get to breed sheep, and the more sheep you breed, the more points you get. You just get more points. Also, you should do some farming. If you farm more wheat than someone else, you get points. <laughs> it's like the most like placid gameplay you can imagine, but it's like cutthroat. It's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta start like plant. I gotta stop pl- start planting pumpkins and wheat right now, or else I'm not gonna be able to feed my people, and they're gonna die. <laughs> and, like, I gotta like, you know set up my farm in such a way that I get I get more crops and, and animals than anyone else and like it's 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 cutthroat, you know? I need uh, I guess this is fine. Or games are still a thing. I hard disagree playing for points is the ultimate abstraction. That's an interesting way of putting that. Playing for points is the ultimate ultimate abstraction. What an interesting idea. It's not inherently bad. I can have fun throwing balls through loops. Complexity does not correlate with enjoyment. I would agree with that as well. Cor- complexity can correlate with enjoyment, but it really depends, doesn't it? Like, for instance, um, you know, like, I would say that Caves of Cud is one of my favorite games of all time. It's also debatably one of the most complex games I've ever played. Um, there, there are more complex games, but you know, not that I've played in any case. And I would say that the complexity does correlate with enjoyment because the reason I enjoy that game is because there are so many different systems that are layering on top of each other. It really is a, like a layer cake of complexity and. I am super there for it. I, I love it. Uh, but that's not always the case. You know, sometimes complexity just kind of gets in the way and makes you, you know, not have a good time, not enjoy it. It's like, I don't know what's going on and I don't enjoy that. And maybe even when you do understand what's going on, it's like, yeah, sure. But like, uh, is that, is it good? Because it's like, opaque because it's uh because there's a high learning curve is the learning curve serving the player or is it serving the game to just be arbitrarily more complex i really want to play spirit island but i haven't been i haven't gotten a chance to yet i want to love ui but i don't have the gaming friends to enjoy it i don't know gavin we 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 could set something up I'm down I'm down for like a Friday night uh let's let's play some caverna or something. Now then care to leap into the fray once more or are we done here? I really wanted to try Fields of Arl and I actually owned it in in like in real real world in the real world, you know? Like not the virtual world. Uh the real one. I owned Fields of Arl. What is Fields of Arl for everyone else who isn't basically me and Gavin? It's one of the most complex games that Ui has ever made, and it's an only two-player game, and you own a farm, and you have to, like, cut peat and grow your farm and tend to animals, and you also have to uh, cart your crops and your resources to the town to sell them, and then you can upgrade your cart for a tractor, like, eventually get a vehicle, and you have to also get fuel for the vehicle like it's a literal simulation of owning a farm and it blows me away i really love i I love ui just is uncompromising in their game and the thing is is ui's ui games the complexity does lend to fun because it just means that the player has uh other opportunities to try things like the they they you you you're not so much building a strategy as you are just like trying different flavors of strategies. Like I don't know how to optimize in an Ui Rosenberg game because there's so many things going on. Uh, and so I kind of just enjoy the flavor of it. But in any case, um, you know, 
Fields of Arl is like an $80 game, and I owned it, and I was like, hey, random friend, do you want to play Fields of Arl? And they're like, oh, uh, what do you do in that game? Well, you have a farm pass. Wait, wait, no, it's got really deep sheep breeding mechanic pass, hard pass. Also, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> Uh, bimple points are better than Japanese video game points. True. My favorite are simple games that are not obvious. Troyus. Troyus is my favorite board game that nobody wants to play because it's hard to know what it is the right move at any given point. I haven't heard of that one. I thought it was pretty versed in the board game uh, ga scene, but I, I don't know that one. There is a danger where after people learn up two systems become gatekeepers of it. Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? It's like when a game is arbitrarily complex and um, like really annoying to learn, someone who went to the effort to actually learn that game th think that they, they are entitled to some kind of like, as you say, gatekeeping ability. Like, it's like, oh, you're my brother. You know, I just like, I don't even want to... I don't even want to straw man that person because they are so annoying. <laughs> like, like, dude, shut up. It's a game. Who cares? Like, uh, you know, I never, like, uh, luckily, luckily, there's not a lot of that in the Caves of Cud community. I'm so grateful. So grateful. When I did the whole Cud thing, I didn't have to hear from a lot of people about, oh, you, 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 yeah, whatever, dude. Get out of here. I'm, I'm playing the- I'm trying to play the game. I'm learning here. This is- this is me learning. Uh... I want to try Caverna or Feast for Odin. Feast for Odin is one of my favorite games ever. Spirit Island is amazing. Most replayable board game I've ever learned. There's a good tabletop simulator version of it. I've- I have that. And I would love to try some Spirit Island at some point. Um, yeah, Feast for Odin is, like, one of my favorite games. Where's the, where's the villain? Perhaps he suspected we were onto him. I still don't trust Masked Dude. I know that he's supposed to be cool, but I still don't trust him. I'm gonna be honest. Looks like he's taken to the catacombs. Fitting for a rat. Why does it feel like we're climbing right into another pitfall? Riding the rat trail like it's hot. They decided to go under cover. Uh, Y2K is apparently actually going to get a massive update to try and make it less like Y2K. Are you talking about the, the J JRPG? I have that game. I was thinking about playing it at some point, but I tend to not like JRPGs. Ah, yeah, ah. Couch. Okay, I guess I'm writing this down. I got my, my little nerd book here that I'm writing the symbol down in. It's good to have a little nerd book so you can write your little nerd notes in it. This bit got old, but I'm I'm committed to this bit about my little nerd book. Gotta have a little book so you can write your little nerd stuff in it. Go ahead and write your little nerd stuff in there, you little nerd. Little, little nerdlet. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Doesn't it's fine. What is wait, I would beat up some SI if Oh, Spirit Island. I would be I would be potentially down for that. It breaches the line of what uh what our relationship is, which is uh purely at this point a streamer uh, and audience, but I, I would be I would be down because it's hard to find people who are down for a complex game. But, um, we'll, we'll have to talk, and I have to think on that. <laughs> what, uh... That was a lot of damage. Oh, I guess it's because I focused. That was absurd. Have you ever heard of our world building? Everyone there got a nerd book. I have not, actually.
I might tolerate Runa because it's not a roguelike uh, roguelite deck builder. Still is a deck builder RPG. It's more like a CCG where you collect trauma. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh... No prob, of course, makes sense. It Oh my god, Big actually pronounces Y2K as Y2K instead of Yeek. Is that how it's pronounced? Yeek? Please don't tell me that. Don't tell me it's actually pronounced that way. Mystery Flesh Pit is the best. All right, guys, it's been a bit. It's been like an hour. How distracting is the the V tube as with the new animations? Wading through the cursed underworld, our heroes stumbled upon another bared passage. Barred passage. It's, not, it's just a great. Oh, that's just great. <laughs> Dare I suggest that these runic symbols might work in the same way as those up in the city? If so, let's keep our eyes open. Yeah, I mean, like, I already got one of them, and I have it written down as being in this direction. So I'm assuming I have to find three more of these. And I'm also assuming when I leave this, that thing is going to reset. Which makes sense. Can we buy... Executioners? Whenever scrap you scrap an enemy, you have a 50% chance of being able to play an extra card next turn. Learning machine. Increases experience points gained by 50%. Eh. You know what I wish was more of a thing in this game is... Uh, Getting, um, I guess, weapons? Uh, I'd like to, yeah, yeah, I want different combos. Yeah, this is what I want. I don't know, I guess I haven't looked at these, like, at all. Um, knowledge of the pressure points come from comprehensive mechanical studies. Kevbo, could you go ahead and recommend me some here? <laughs> so wait, oh I see, this one means I have less redraws per turn, but I get flame reaction. Let's see what flame reaction is. Oh, it's just damage. That sounds like a good one. Let's grab that one. Uh, and then we have martial gauntlets. Um, quivering palm. Deals damage to one foe and makes them flinch. Oh, that sounds great. We lost our flinch. So let's sell some stuff for flinch. I'm going to sell the hydro... The side hydro gloves are barely worth selling, but I guess I will sell them. What does this one do? Thunder wave? Does this stun them? Paralysis. Oh. Oh, interesting. Paralysis sounds good, too. I don't want to sell Magnum Opus. I know that's blasphemous, but let's sell the Valiant Sword. Journeyman Badge. Oh, this is really good. Why am I not using that? Um, <clears throat> grants a damage shield. Well, I have enough for another uh, weapon. Oh, no, I don't. I need 1,400. Okay, let's see if I can't sell enough for 1,400. Uh, let's sell the Sparking Octavo. Wait. Did I not buy... Oh, is it currently equipped? Did I just equip that? Please don't tell me I bought something and then sold it again. Yeah, okay. Flaring Codex. You know what? Let's, uh, let's sell the Sparking Octavo. We almost have enough, so I'll sell, like, a little bit of material. Just a little bit. 
Luster's fiber. We can sell a cup like one of these. That's it. Now we have enough to buy a weapon. I do want this martial gauntlets because adding flinch into this into our repertoire is going to be good. And that is all of our money spent basically. It is pronounced Y2K. A large chunk of the fan base just calls it yeek facetiously because we have a love hate relationship with the game. You'd understand if you played it. Uh, stretching. The stretching while you talk, yeah. How, how is the stretching while I talk? Is it distracting? I guess if you had to ask, then maybe it's not, but I like to ask anyway. I wonder if there are speedrunner strats spreadsheet for this game. <laughs> well, Imatan wonders to himself out loud. I wonder if we could make this game faster <laughs> so that I don't have to watch it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. Uh, listen, listen. I listen. I know. Um, I'm a ten. You're not being salty or, or toxic. I am. I am injecting toxicity into what you said. I understand this, but it's still funny to me. <laughs> it kind of depends on what you want each combo to do. I played with heals and defense, but you seem to prefer offense. Be careful with mask guy. Haste is the only good one for him. Oh, I'm not going to use the mask guy, I think, ever. I've gotten to really like the twins, so I think I'll stick with them. Sucks to we lost our Millie, but I don't want to lose Frog Boy, and Copernica really is OP, so... Uh, I'm good. I'm good with this combo. Hell hello, Jared. How are you doing? Hey, guys, you know what I haven't done the last few weeks, and... I keep forgetting and no one has called me out on it. I'm kind of disappointed. A little bit, I'm a little bit sad. Sad appointed, you know what I mean? Is I didn't do the second part of Jared's game. I, 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 I keep forgetting myself, so I'm disappointed in myself. But also, no one else called me on it. And we need to finish the epic conclusion to, uh, Gustavo's Pizza Shop. What, the, what was that game called? <laughs> Gustavo's Pizza Shop. <laughs> I don't know. This is a bad turn. Stretch is fine most of the time, but it gets weird when you make a long sound without break, like, yo! Yo! What? Why does this button open edge? <laughs> I meant to do, yo! Whoa! There you go. You mean Pedro Land? I do mean Pedro Land. Wow, that guy has four health left? Damn it. He missed with poison. That was really good. Um... All right, we'll get him with the flame flame wave. We don't have to do like go out of our way to kill that lad. Jared, I don't even remember what Jared's game was, so I sure as heck wasn't going to remind anyone to play it. Fair. Do do be do 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 be do be do do be do be do 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 be do do be do. All right, easy, easy peasy. I like the new faces. The stretching feels like forty percent too much IMO. Oh, interesting. Meaning, like it happens too often, or it it's it goes too high. I can I can tweak it to go not as high. So like I could shrink it a little bit. So now this is. I'm gonna speak for a really long time here. That's as that's as high as it's gonna get now. And that way, it's truly the least distracting. It's just forty percent, you know. It's just forty percent too much. 
It's just a bit too juicy. <laughs> uh, all right, hold on a second. Let me reduce the smoothing a little bit. So now that I've shrunk the maximum size, I'll reduce the smoothing a little bit so that it's a bit more sensitive. So, you know, it catches a bit more of my ooms. Uh, eh. What's that uh, TikTok sound? Eh. Ooh. Oh. You know the one. You know the one I'm talking about, surely. Wait, these guys are ice based, frost based? So I'm still good with fire then. Perfect? Is it perfect now? Pawn hub sound. No. I, uh, I really want to get a soundboard one day and then have like voice effects. Because then I can have like echo and stuff like that. I would not overuse that. I would not over. I would not overuse it. Like I do the puppet. I swear. <laughs> and its punch card slots, like old computers used to have. What science is this? Hello, Galen. How are you doing? Rare sighting by brother Galen. What science is this? This is the science of magic. You know. You know. Prince card holes are like braille for robots. Are you saying that all robots are blind? Yo, I'm about to die. <laughs> I need healing. Uh, well, this is none of this is healing, actually. So we're just gonna blindside do everything. Magic, you know. Magic, you know. Never believe it's not so. <laughs> you wouldn't believe. Never believe it's not so. <laughs> I'm good. Yesterday was a post-con nap day. How do you do that stretching? Ah, uh, uh, yes. I, Galen is also a VTube uh, connoisseur. Kind of connoisseur. Um, the stretching is achieved with a OBS filter called um, stretch. Oh no! Hold on a second. It's called scale to sound. If you Google OBS scale to sound, it's very, very easy to install and very easy to set up. I, I had to tinker with it a little bit so that it wasn't too much. It's very easy to go overboard, but I think I found the sweet spot uh, with with chat's help. Chat help. I prefer enthusiast. Oh, enthusiast. Yeah, it, Galen has like 13 VTubes varying uh, in like abstractions of himself and also uh, the, what was it, the, the, what's the purple grape, like, prune from YTV? No one in chat is gonna know what I'm talking about, because no one is Canadian, but, you know, you know, the thing, the reference, the thing I'm referencing that you don't know at all, you know, that thing, right? Oh my god, okay, we have to do recovery. I am, like, not doing any recovery right now. Okay. My seven-year-old nephews are into Pokemon cards now, and oh my god, I absolutely stomped one of them with his psychic deck. <laughs> Gavin taking absolute mirth in the destruction of children via Pokemon. Absolutely fantastic work there, Gavin. Definitely show your work next time. Uh, I want to see a video with them crying next time, please. I don't know, there's something really funny 
Listen, this is gonna sound bad. There's something that really funny to me about um, adults <laughs> playing children's games <laughs> and then also stomping the just like the absolute joy out of a child's day. Listen, does that make me a bad person? I think it probably does, but I might be okay with that. Just a little bit. Oh no, I'm dying. Oops. Is this karma? Is that what this is supposed to be? Do be be do be do. Um, yeah. This is bad. I have to use a recovery thing. Oh, I don't have one. Uh oh. Shoot. Oh no, am I in this position again? I'm gonna be doing this silly dance with the uh, frog lad again. Oh no. Hard styling on a child is hilarious. Snit. Yeah, the snit. I miss old YTV. Listen, I know it's really played out for people like, I miss the way things were. The things they- the, the way things were, were something I understood, and now I don't understand how things are. It's not good. Things are bad now, because they're not the way they- I remember them. But also, I really miss old YTV, because it was just, like, weird. It was weird for the sake of weird, and honestly, I kind of miss that. Now everything is, like, I don't know. Everything, um, everything's appealing. I don't want things to appeal to me, you know? I want things, at, at, at their best, I think that things should appeal to nobody. <laughs> I think I'm gonna die. And, um, uh, I might have to be okay with that here. Cause, like, I, I don't think I, I have, I'm doing no damage, and I'm getting no cards also. And also, Frog Lad has no physical attacks. And also, these guys are healing each other. So I think I'm done here. This this is uh not not ideal. I could continue healing myself to no end. He took it really well. He conceal conceded after he stole his fight energy from this big guy that took him all game to power up. Oh my god. Mid to late nineties weird aesthetic was a lot of fun. It was fun. I miss the way things were. The things- the way things are right now is not fun to me anymore because I'm an adult and things are made for children. Listen, unironically I do not like the modern aesthetic of like television, but ironically I also don't like hearing people complain about television or like nostalgia or you know just like rose tinted nonsense like yeah, I mean, it, maybe I agree with you, but also I don't- I don't want to agree with you. You're the, the worst person. Can I donate children tears to your coffee? I do not ex I do not accept children's tears as a form of payment, I'm sorry. I should, but no, I, I should not. Chat and streamer just lost a lot of my respect, not gonna lie. <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. I'm gonna be okay with that. Above above uh, the entire stream is a hard veneer, a, a layer of irony in which I will uh, hide all of my mor morality. I can just, I can just say, well, but it, I didn't mean it. <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying bully children. A hundred percent I'm not saying that. There's just something specifically funny to me about uh, adults playing a children's game. So they've already submitted. They've already, like, laid their pride out on the table, right? They're like, I'm totally okay playing this children's game with a child. And I mean, like, outside of a, a you know, like, a parental or guardian person just kind of, like, entertaining a child... We're talking about a situation like, for instance, um, an adult has gone specifically to a, a location to play a child's game. 
You know what I mean? Like, there has to be a certain sacrifice of their own pride in order to do this, right? And then have decided to take the game so seriously that they're going to play their hardest against, like, a 12 to 15 year old, or even, lo like, younger. Like, um, I'm not, s <laughs> I'm not saying it's funnier if they're even younger. I am, I'm just saying that the dissonance of a, an adult playing and taking a, very seriously a child's game against a child is just really funny to me. Not necessarily because they might destroy the child and give them some deep-seated, like, uh, you know, core memory, but also because, like, they already had to sacrifice some pride in order to... <laughs> In order to do that, and then they're going to take pride in winning against a child, it just seems really funny to me. I don't know. Also, I died just now. What a mature lad. Mid to 90, uh, what is it? In my defense, it was my first time playing, and the deck he gave me was working really well. This is for entertainment purposes only, but it's funny, at least in concept, if not execution. Uh, I, I promise to at least finish one chapter. Let Big pick on children. <laughs> He's Canadian. Never trust a druid. Oh no. How long ago did I, did I save? Oh my god. Okay. This is bad. Also, just for, like, context, I've never done this myself. I've definitely been in positions where I've had to babysit children and, you know, in, in that position, if, if I'm so obligated, I will, I will definitely take a board game off the shelf. I'm not saying I would take one specifically revolving around farming, for instance, but I am saying that I would probably entertain the idea of playing a board game to, you know, just for the purposes of entertaining the children. And uh, if I so happen to know that board game, well, I mean, that's just so I can teach them the rules more quickly, right? You know, it's a, it's good to know a game in order to teach them. And if that game so happened to have very complex breeding mechanics for sheep, well, that's not really my fault. But if I did know how to optimize said sheep breeding me mechanics, so then, I don't know, who's to say? I might be very good at that game and... <laughs> uh, the twins are also really into Minecraft now. Next time I'm visiting, I will demand they watch Vintage Story. Oh, wow. I, I, I appreciate that. I don't think it will... I hope it'll be entertaining for them. Probably games on a leapfrog educational game system that I had in my early childhood. What is considered a child game? No shame to those who like games made for children. Okay, this is... Since since this is coming up now, I mean, like, I, I have been talking about it for, like, the last 20 minutes or so. Um, I think it's fair to say that Pokemon, the, the card game, is made for kids. Like, is it fair to say that? Can we agree on that? Like, Pokemon was made for children, and I think that that's fine. Like, you know, it has depth to it, for sure. And it, I'm not saying that adults cannot enjoy something intended for kids. I, I enjoy a lot of things intended for kids. Like, it's, you know, it's media, right? And some things have depth to them, and that is, like, totally fine. Um... <clears throat> But at the end of the day, I think that it's fair to say that Pokemon is, in general, uh, targeted towards kids. Like, it's, it just is. <laughs> like, you know, you watch the anime, and it's like, yeah, this is like, I mean, it's got some stuff to it, but it's still a kid show. And, you know, we, the card game is really just a justification to sell cards. I mean, to get not to get political or anything but it basically is low tier gambling made for kids like that's what all ccgs are is like i want to get charizard that's what it is these days 
I, does anyone even play? I, okay, I mean, Gavin literally just said that they were playing the Pokemon game, but I don't hear of people playing the Pokemon game all that much. I hear a lot of, of from people who are like, I bought like 50 packs of Pokemon cards in order to get Charizard, and I already own 10 Charizards. But I don't hear about, I don't hear those people saying, also, I wanted to get Charizard for my Charizard deck. I, I, I just hear a lot of people collecting foil Pokemon cards. Um, but, like, you know, it's, it's, it's 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 for kids, you know. It's for it's for kiddies. You know, kids want to collect Charizard because he's a dragon and he's cool. You know, like and Pikachu is way more complicated than modern Pokemon games are. The last four or five gens of Pokemon games are literally designed to, so a five-year-old toddler cannot lose. Age gap. Pokemon was made to for <laughs> Pokemon was made for get money. I really like that. Does does Nintendo or uh, what's the company called? Uh, Game Freak is it Game Freak? Does Game Freak uh, accept children's tears as a form of payment? <laughs> Ugh. Um, didn't have computers in elementary. Pokemon the card um, Pokemon the trading card game in my eyes is a game that all people can enjoy. Uh, right. So just in case I wasn't clear, I definitely don't think that people of all ages can't enjoy it. I just think that um, regardless of the depth, maybe, I'm going to say this. Regardless of the depth... The Pokemon card game, when you boil it down, is is still... Uh, I, I play Pikachu and, and Charizard, and there's this kind of veneer of, of you know, kind of like... Uh, how do I put it? Like, cartoonish, um, juvenile kind of <laughs> flavor to it, you know? Like, um, I'm not saying that card games can't be cute... I'm just saying that Pokemon's a very cute card game. And so when you get like a, a 30 year old saying like, I play my, you know, my mega evolved Charizard on the field and they're gonna do Fire Breath. I, I'm just like, yo, <laughs> and enjoy yourself for sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> absolutely nothing wrong with that, but I, I am definitely giggling over here. I do be giggling, you know? I, I have no room for uh, to talk. I've got like you know a goblin deck in MTG, and it's it's just as juvenile. It's just that the the artwork makes it look less juvenile. That's really it. I don't know. You know what? How about this? I'm wrong today. Bimple is wrong. Bimple's wrong. At some point, I was wrong here. I'll I'll say that. Original Pokemon games were actually fairly solid RPGs, but the modern games, damn. I haven't played a Pokemon game in a very long time. If you were to look at, say, the old Lego Ninjago figures, figure packs, and with trading cards, I'd say that would suit a younger audience. You know, I didn't really think that this was going to be a topic with so much... Um, I won't say that we're getting vitriolic, but there's a lot of different angles to this. Because... As, you know, I do think that originally, and on average, Pokemon is a uh, franchise intended for children. I also think that Nintendo and Game Freak are very well, well aware of the fact that adults take, you know, pleasure in this franchise. I mean, people like myself, for instance, who were at 1.0. 12 playing Pokemon red or yellow or blue are now 30 somethings and so there's going to be an element of nostalgia there um so you know it's an interesting thing that we we have this franchise that is now uh kind of intended for a wide age bracket how do you do that how does how do they manage that you know Game Freak accepts adults, adult tears as a form of payment after they see 
I have Pokemon butt ream. I should not have read that one. <laughs> if you look, it's... Uh, might also have been my school being behind the times, but yeah, there's a bunch of guys, 30 in chat. I had early exposure. My third grade teacher had a computer in the classroom, 1990. I played the heck out of L Logo Writer. You had a Commodore 64. That is, that is some heft privilege there. Um, I, well, I didn't have my own computer until I was probably 15, but that's still pretty privileged. I did, however, have access to, like, pretty much whatever games I, I wanted. It's a complicated childhood, is all I'll say. It was a weird, it was a weird dissonance of privilege I had growing up. Because on one hand, I had access to pretty much whatever you could ever hope for. Um, you know, as a child, you're like, yeah, I can play and do a lot of things. But also, um, oh, 10,000. As soon as I saw this guy, I was like, yep, this is going to be a troll enemy, isn't it? I have to do some recovery right now. Um... But yeah, like I, I had, you know, had my own computer at one, uh, at one point. <clears throat> well, I, I mean, since 15, I've, I've been a PC player, pretty much. Pokemon card game, so childish, Charizard using Fire Breath. I'm going to be over here with my mature Magic the Gathering <laughs> dragon using its adult Fire Breath <laughs> tips. <laughs> You're right to make fun of me there. That's 100% fair. And honestly, I take, I take the, like... I'm right there with you, Kevbo. It's exactly the same thing. It's exactly the same thing, except that it's a mature dragon with mature goblins. You might have your little child, little, little kitty goblins over there, but I've got my, my high fantasy goblins over here. I cast Jace. Jace casts cool counter spells, and he's cool and immature and an adult. You, you have Ash, Ketchum, whatever. Go back to your child games. <laughs> yeah. I think I played school accepted games like Cool Math. Cool Math, that rings a bell. Duck Tears, what is happening? So this is a boss, right? Like I'm accidentally fighting a boss here? I'm not sure, you said. I'll make myself a cup of coffee, BRB. Different colors of mana creatures that have different attacks, no re reactions, instance those. You would compare Pokemon to MTG, but extremely simplified. Yeah. I think as a, you know, the, the real takeaway today, I think is uh, don't, don't make fun of Pokemon, basically ever. <laughs> um. Because, as I mentioned, it does have a wide age bracket. But anyway, um, it's, it's, it's interesting to me. I still think it's funny when uh, an adult is, is playing like, an, a, like a 12 year old in Pokemon. There's something about the dissonance in that that will just tickle me to death. Um, and I'm gonna continue with taking enjoyment in that. You can't take that from me, Chad. I'm sorry. You can be the bigger man this time. I will be the small simple. How about that one? I'm gonna be the small simple. You can be the, the adult. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be over here with my edgelord uh, Pokemon with it, my adult dragons. Don't make it weird. My folks were teacher librarians, so they became the de facto IT guy for their schools. Hey, something that occurred to me that we, we didn't really touch on, and I am interested in this. Isn't it kind of weird how, like, supremely banned Pokemon or, like, Magic or, like, any kind of card game was in every single school? Is that still a thing? Like, I haven't, you know, I, I don't know. I, I haven't been in school for a long time. But his, how banned are these games still? <laughs> like, I seem to recall a rampant, just like, succession of bans of like, 
yeah, no no Pokemon, no magic, no Yu-Gi-Oh, like a turbo no Yu-Gi-Oh, like 100% no Yu-Gi-Oh. Also, no Pogs. Don't bring Pogs to school. <laughs> I don't know that- I don't know if that one was, like, is, you know. Uh, I really wish that Yacht Club Games would get something- someone to make Justice from King of Cards a physical trading card game. Oh yeah. I played a lot of that. Wasn't banned in my school. Maybe your school just had more mature kids. They were banned in all of my schools. All of them. Don't even think about card games. If I even see a single card, you can't even bring, like, cards for making notes. Because if you bring them, you're going to trade them. And as soon as you trade them, we're going to see tears. <laughs> like... I play my notes from math class. Oh yeah? Well, I play my algebra notes. You can't play that. That card's banned. It doesn't matter. I sw I'm gonna... Tears. Absolute tears. Within seconds. Uh... I was sure... I was not sure. It's been a long time. I'll look it up. Hockey cards being banned at my school just because fights would break out over them. What? Stealing. That's the first damage, like, attack that he's done that's actually gone through, and it was uh, really bad. <laughs> like, it hurt a lot. Chat equals sim big simple. Bimple equals small complicated. That is kind of a mini boss or secret troll. Yeah, I had a feeling. Oh man, he he hit Frog Boy again and and they're like almost dead. And he has reduced attack as well. Like this guy has reduced attack and he's still like hitting real hard. We need to blindside this guy post haste. I only did the second blind side so I could get the combo off. Is it worth dooming them, do you think? Oh, we have like a lot of steam, so I should uh, hit them as hard as I can. Mind you that myself and my siblings were homeschooled. We had community things, but that we attended through. So we do socialize. Yo, I killed the duck. <laughs> Bimple likes mature dragons. Uh, you ever say a thing you know you're gonna regret, but you say it anything and you still end up regretting it? Oh, hey, I found a thing. Okay, hold on a second. Do do do. Writing it down in my nerd book. My mature nerd book with mature themes and mature nerd notes. Do, 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 Where is the save point in this area? Like, I'm, there doesn't seem to be a save point. Whoa. Final flash. Five. Holy cow. Holy cow. I might have to use this. That's a lot of damage. Maybe just for a boss, you know? We might switch to lightning for, like, one round. And, uh... Wait. Is this where it came from? No. Oh. Yes? Okay. Well, I'm gonna go save... I... Where is the save point? I would like to buy another weapon for the, the, the lads. 
They get leech. This one would also give them leech, but they get more wet, uh, damage. This one gives them skunk spray. I like leech because it means I don't have to heal the twins. So let's buy that. Uh, big went on a rant about how... Listen. You can't put it... You can't say it like that. That's not okay. There's no abuse in this situation. It's it, like they, both parties have agreed to playing a game and one just happened to be better and also wrong for playing it. <laughs> Uh, you know, there's no, there's no, uh, me escaping this situation without m still being wrong, so I may as well double down on being wrong. How about that? Back with my coffee. Who gets full of fedora by insisting the ladies love mature Magic the Gathering. He really did, like, a hundred percent hyperbolize everything I said in one sentence there, didn't you, bud? <laughs> Like, for sure I was asking for it, but also, damn. <laughs> I don't get a say in any of this, do I? <laughs> Bimple was being a nerd again. What else is new? He's always a nerd. Yeah, but this time it was bad, because he was making fun of Pokemon. Which just happens to be my favorite thing. You're over there with your edge lord cards, whereas my my cool mature deep child game over here is cool. Don't make fun of it, please. <laughs> Listen, I'm now tripling down. This is going to I think a fight is going to be uh, break out and I'm going to have to ban Pokémon cards from my own stream. I haven't beaten a chapter yet, and it's because I died, and this is going to take a while. Uh, if Kirby got a trading card game, would it be considered for adults or for children? Kirby's weird because, it, though it is very, uh, ch like, cute and childlike in nature, it tends to have some pretty weirdly dark themes in it. Um, I don't know how Kirby games get, like, decided on. Like, it's, it's just very, very... Keeps acting like the making funny, funny of Pokemon is the bad part and not the part where he said he enjoys making <laughs> I never said that. If you're gonna put words in my mouth, you may as well make them good words. I said I, I take enjoyment in adults attending a card game intended for children and then making the child cry. There's a difference there because the fact is that the adult is the person who is wrong there, not the child. The child is not wrong for crying or for playing the game. It's the adult who has taken the game seriously. Unless you're saying, of course, Kevbo, that you are in fact the adult. Are you saying that I'm taking enjoyment in you making children cry? Because then that's a to totally different conversation. Then... Then the whips come out, <laughs> and the pitchforks, and I will not be the one. I will be in the crusade, I will not be crusaded. Kevbo revealed didn't like me making fun of adults playing Pokemon because he was the one making children cry. <laughs> uh, I only have two? Did I miss one? I missed several, didn't I? Where is the save point? There is no save point. Like, anywhere. I'm gonna have to buy some consumables. This is absurd. Recovery items. Um, let's buy, like, three of these. Big backtracking faster than the rip -up. Listen. You can call me whatever you want, but that's what I said. I was right, the more you try to explain, the worse it gets. <laughs> Treasure Mountain, that was popular. What is Treasure Mountain? I got 70,000 Steam points. I don't think I told you guys, when I ordered my Steam Deck, 
there happened to be a Steam sale at the time, like a, the summer sale. You know what happens when you buy things in, during the summer, like a, d during a Steam summer sale? It's like uh, they they give you trading cards, right? Based on on uh, how much you spend. And uh, s since I bought a Steam Deck, uh, they gave me like eighty trading cards. <laughs> I did the math, and uh, like I, if I was to sell all those trading cards, I would have I would have gotten five dollars. Lower left part of the map. I think you missed a door. Big officially said that he enjoys making Kevbo cry. What? Yeah, chat is full gaslight today. I swear to God. This is what I get for uh, talking about Pokemon. We 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 can't talk about Pokemon. I've come to realize this. Banned. Pokemon banned from chat, officially. <laughs> this is why it was banned in my school. Treasure Mountain was an educational game that kind of sucked, but they'd let you play if you finished early. I don't know who Pokemon main is. Am I supposed to? Like, I, I keep hearing about Pokemon. I don't know anything about them. What? What's the deal? I put them to sleep and then immediately woke them up. Maybe sleep is not something I should... Literally abusing his power and authority to pick on the little guy. Yeah. Uh, full full gaslight. It's strange. Chad is officially turning on me. I knew the day would come. Pokimane is the mature version. She's a controversial... Stream stress. St stream stress. Stream stress? How do you say that? Okay. All right. All right. What's controversial? I like. I like a bit of controversy. I like a drama. He's just a little guy. What Kevbo gonna do against the big and the simple? Hey, if I'm so simple, then how come you can't take me on? I'm. I'm. I'm big. Stupid. You can win against one one. Who who gonna win? Some big uh, simple guy or or uh, I don't know. I can't finish that joke. There's there's nothing good there. This chapter is taking a while. I gotta say. I'll be gone in a day or two. I feel like I kind of just started this since I asked. <laughs> you didn't start anything. Nothing was started, but a doobie ending, I tell you that for nothing. <laughs> Stream stress sounds better. So, what's controversial? Let's, you know, like, as long as we're doubling, tripling down on certain controversial uh, topics today, let's uh, go ahead and fill me in on another one. What's controversial? Is a nine hour, 24 long video about all her controversies. Never mind. I, I never mind. Pretend I didn't ask. I don't worry about it. <laughs> what? How can someone be so controversial? <laughs> Actually, I, I, I'd hate to think how long the video on JonTron is. I saw, I, okay, I watch a YouTuber who's maybe a little bit con- I wouldn't say they're controversial. They're just kind of spicy, and they don't even need to be, but they are. Um, and they had JonTron as a guest, and I was like, what? Why? <laughs> Why are we giving this person any clout? Any, are they, okay, am I allowed to not like JonTron, or is chat gonna gaslight me into- Make, making this about me being an abuser or something. <laughs> uh, 
I feel like I played Dora the Explorer. CC, you well, you see, <laughs> what? There's a Dora the Explorer CCG? No. Don't, that, no. I guess there's a CCG for any, everything. I have a friend who collects dead CCGs. They have a lot of CCGs and they wanted to do, do like a, a YouTube kind of thing, which I think they still could do. I think it would be a lot of fun. But like they have a skating CCG, like Tony Hawk's skating CCG and there's a game. And there's like a Dragon Ball one. There's like many Dragon Ball games. Did you hear there's gonna be a One Piece CCG? That's probably DOA, huh? Right? DOA on, dead on arrival, right? There's no way that One Piece CCG is gonna be any good at all. Ooh, that's a lot of money. What it IH? What? I don't think JonTron is irredeemable. What? He's pretty irredeemable. I don't know. I think that it doesn't get much worse. I mean, okay, JonTron, I don't think he's like uh, a, uh, what, what's, what's his name now? Uh, he's not like a Dr. Disrespect, who's just like going out of their way to be like the worst. Um, but they're like, I, I feel to, just to me, they, they come across as being genuine in their irredeemableness. Like, I feel like, I here's my weird take. I think that someone like Dr. Disrespect or uh, what's the other guy? I can't remember. He's like starting his own game company or something. Um, what's his name? He's got like a, a everything about him bugs me. I can't remember his name. He's he's like the V guy and he's like starting his own stream platform or something. Person. Oh, was it IH, the controversial video? He didn't murder someone. Excuse me? Did someone get murdered? Let's not talk about that actually. I should not be that interested. <laughs> Thank God I don't use Twitter. I don't give much of a dang about JonTron's views on one way or another, but I've been watching him since his normal boots and Game Grumps days. He makes funny videos equals I watch. Well, I don't know. I try not to be so cut and dry like that. Um, we, I mean, we talk a little bit on here about how uh, we're living in an age of um, having to be okay with some of the things that we watch being created by truly despicable people I'm not gonna exactly specifically talk about like what that means but I am gonna say that on a whole if someone has irredeemable views I'm probably not gonna enjoy their content because I can't not think about that I mean if you want to enjoy it go go for it I guess but it, it, I can't like Eventually, it, eventually it seeps through the cracks into their content a little bit, you know? I think it does. Deck builders are not bad. The issue is that there are a lot of them with nothing to offer. Yeah, I would, I would, I would say that a lot of deck builders are very samey. Like, they kind of build on mechanics that have been established in previous games. And don't really offer much new into, you know. Um, but also, I feel like a lot of them are just kind of not very well balanced. Not not that they aren't balanced, but that they aren't fun. Like, you know, I, I think it, you know, it, you need more than it just like having basic deck building mechanics. I think that... Um, I think that you need you need to actually ensure that the game is fun. And I have played a lot of deck builders at this point, and a lot of them just feel like this exactly the same game, and not very interesting. Like they don't really do anything new. Um, all right, this is not well optimized, but I'm going to do it anyway. You're being made by something. 
All of Hollywood's history is full of sexual misconduct. Yeah, I also don't tend to watch a lot of Hollywood stuff. At least, I don't go to theaters anymore. Um, like, you're not wrong. You're absolutely not wrong. That doesn't mean don't think about it, because it's everywhere. That means think about it more. You know? Like, at a certain point, I, I, ref I refuse to disconnect myself from that reality because it's so rampant. You know? World gets more and more absurd with each day. Welcome to Clown World Honk Honk. That's pretty good. I appreciate that. We live in an age. I mean, Caravaggio was... <laughs> Jesus. Death of the author has been an issue for most of civilization. That's true. I guess, um, you know, here's the thing. The, I'm a 10, uh, was kind of onto something when he said, thank God I'm not on Twitter. Uh, it, it's not unfair to say that um, social media is a big part of it today. It, ha it plays more of a firm hand in the death of the uh, author in a sense, because we have a way closer connection to, you know, content creators. I'm going to say content creators, but like artists, like, you know, if we had Twitter in, uh, say like <clears throat> Van Gogh's era, we might've heard some spicy things from Van Gogh and then, uh, we'd have to be separating our, ourselves from them a little bit. Um, but it's true. I think that I think that social media is a big part of why we're being forced to acknowledge more these days what um, what kind of creators are in control of the content we tend to enjoy. You're not justified in a small moral moral act because it doesn't solve or address all similar concurrent issues. Is specious and pedantic. Yeah, I mean, it, that that's sort of where that meme comes from. Uh, you know, we should improve society somewhat, yet you participate in society curious. Like, I, I think that, you know, um, it's fair to say, uh, you know, there is no... <laughs> there's no way to, to enjoy a lot of content without at some point bumping into a problematic creator. And I think that that is an opportunity to think about that and acknowledge it and not an opportunity to completely disconnect from that topic. I think disconnecting is a um, tempting. It's very tempting to say, well, yeah, but everyone's problematic. Well, yeah, but, you know, some more than others. I'm problematic. <laughs> I've been, I was problematic today, in fact. So you have to, you know, but, but let's acknowledge it and let's talk about it and let's like think about it and not just like completely cut ourselves off from that because I think that that's the real problem. I think that that people ignoring it completely is is an issue. Uh, all right, we're gonna do this. Eight hundred damage. Where is that coming from? Hi, bot. You drink coffee every single day. Do you make sure that the company your coffee... No, that, that falls squarely under there is no... Uh, there is no, no moral consumption under capitalism. For sure. I know, you're, I know what you're going to say. You're probably typing it out already. Oh, well, it's, it's very fair for you. you know, it's, it's easy for you to say that for something that you enjoy. But the things that I enjoy, I have to acknowledge, are problematic. It's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that at a certain point, the things that we literally consume are all problematic. And that's something that I definitely think we should acknowledge. <laughs> you know, at no point am I going to say, well, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm going to disconnect myself from the fact that drinking coffee every day is probably pr problematic and is probably making someone's life worse in this world. A hundred percent. That That is something I definitely think about. Definitely think about how many times when I, when I'm eating like any meat product, how bad that is, 100%. But a lot of that, unfortunately, like, you know, what, what are you going to do about it, right? That's what you're saying. What are you going to do about it? Therefore, do nothing. No, 
therefore, let's talk about it and let's acknowledge it. I want to acknowledge that stuff too, but also, like, we don't have to be going to see a lot of movies made by certain problematic people. We don't have to be reading certain things. And I think it's fair to say that without then running into the argument, well, but everything you did today was problematic, and therefore I'm going to go ahead and enjoy this thing made by someone who thinks that other people don't deserve rights. I'm going to call you up on that a little bit. You know, I'm not saying you are literally saying that. I'm saying that that is the go-to argument by a lot of people, and it don't sit good with me. I'm I'm not cool with that. That's a, that sounds bad to me. That sounds like an excuse to, uh, you know, it sounds like you're okay with it actually. Like, that's okay. I mean, g g continue. Fair. I. I you're welcome to all of those opinions, and I'm uh, welcome to disagree with them. Lots of spice going on today. Yeah, I mean, it's probably my fault. See, this is what happens when you bring up Pokemon. You end up talking about the death of the author. Don't worry, don't, don't mind me just writing down in my nerd book. Uh, read Ursula K. Le Guin. She wrote amazing children's fantasy and really interesting sci-fi. I had lots of good moments pushing through the hardships. It's like climbing the mountain. And what's happening? That'd be rough. What happened? I missed something that Imatan said. I think we can live our best lives in this cruel world and try to make it better. Yeah, like... You know, I'm not saying... There's no... Listen, there's no way to live a completely problematic free life. I will say that. I just think that that doesn't mean completely... Like, don't lose hope and don't give up thinking about it. Because I know thinking about it sucks. And it's not fun. And, you know, acknowledging that some of the stuff that we enjoy is not okay is not a thing we want to do but you know i think that it can help the world a little bit it can it's just uh you know it's just like it sucks it's uncomfortable for sure gotta love some spice i had lots of good moments pushing through the I boycott a lot of things, and they're definitely more than... Okay, like, all right, let's, you know, I know we're, like, full politics now, like, genuinely. So, you know, a lot of this probably alienating half my chat. But, you know, let's 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 consider for a moment <clears throat> uh, being vegan, right? Not eating meat. That is a decision that you can make today. And I have a lot of respect for people who are making that decision because they've acknowledged the fact that eating meat is uh it, it can lend towards harmful and destructive industries as well as like horribly abusive ones like just straight up and this isn't really a subject subjective thing anymore it it's kind of objective they're j objectively just terrible things in this world um so that's fine does it mean you're a bad person if you eat meat? No, it doesn't. Because, you know, that's a thing that we do. It's, a, it's like a very established thing. You can definitely think about it, though. You can definitely cut out a little bit of meat. Like, I attended, uh, I attended a couple seminars um, a couple years ago about this, about, like, kind of environmental impact stuff. And, you know, the, I think one of the best takeaways is, like, we're, you know, what makes the world better, what helps more isn't um, that everyone cuts meat out of their diet completely. It's that you think about it enough to cut a little bit out. If everyone cut, like, took one day off each week that was like, I'm not going to eat meat today, then that would do more than a few people who went completely vegan. Why am I talking about this? Well, because I think that this rule applies as well to problematic content. 
I think if you think about it enough, if you're willing to acknowledge it, you're willing to, to consider the content that you are enjoying and, and that it might be problematic, then cutting a little bit of it out of your life, or at least just acknowledging it to, you know, when, when the topic comes up, does more to help the world as a whole than if you completely, like, no, this is bad, and I hate it, and then I'm, I'm, I'm disconnecting from it. You can do that. Not saying that don't do that, you know, if you feel strongly about it. But I think a little bit of acknowledgement goes a long way. So that's where I'm coming from. I know from a pr streamer perspective, I can, uh, like, people can read ev what I'm saying as being, like, hard statements on things and so it comes up across as very hyperbolic and maybe you even feel attacked that's not necessarily my intention um in fact it is never my intention to at attack anyone but uh you know like when i'm coming across from my perspective on things like that's that's the only thing i can do and and so it's you know it's not me versus you so much as me uh like throwing my cards on the table you know in capitalism, boycotts do have an effect. On the other hand, someone like John Tron won't ever change if you don't interact with him. I was vegan for a year so or so, but it takes a lot of work and money. It does, yeah. That's that's where the term, like, you know, uh, no ethical consumption under capitalism comes from. It's like, we're, we're like, living through our, like, Jesus, I, I really should stop talking politics right now. But like our third recession or so in like the last couple decades and and like we're expected to make moral and ethical decisions like cutting meat out of our lives i don't think so i don't i wouldn't ask anyone to do that you know not not even my intention to kind of bring it up it's more of an analogy for for problematic content and also not enjoying certain content is free <laughs> That's, you know, at least there's that, right? Cows of any age are so lovely to interact with. I hate to get political, but damn, baby, cows are cute. Cows are cute. I love watching those videos of cows, like, rubbing up on those, uh, you know, you get those, like, weird brushes that spin. Those are so cute. Eat mushrooms. They're up to something. <laughs> Galen, I'm honestly surprised you're still here. I would have thought that most of the conversation you'd be like, eh, I'm good. I'm out. In fact, I honestly th am surprised that half of chat hasn't left. I'm good. <laughs> Big's on his bullshit. Again. Time to go. <laughs> Alright. Fire pillar, definitely upgrading that. Oh, I wanted to go full lightning, didn't I? Oops. Upgrade to incre increase duration. Um, should... Can we do poison and blind side? That'd be nice. Nope. Oops. Oh, well. Can I upgrade anything here? Nope. All right. Also, win feature segment soon, I hope. Like, Lord, I do hope that it's soon. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna hard crack this because I don't know where the last one is, and I'm not gonna search for it. There we go. When you when the video games uh, finish, we have been playing this for two hours, and I didn't even finish one act. It's pretty good. Okay, we're gonna I'm gonna do this and then we're going ooh, drain curse. Physical damage attacker is healed. Wait, what? Whenever the oh when the afflicted foe takes physical damage the attacker is healed. Oh, I see. Huh. That's cool. I live for this kind of controversy. <laughs> Glad I could provide. Gasp! I, I think I know what hand. 
Yep, that's Hawker Jim's hand, all right. After all those pickpocketing lessons, I'd recognize it anywhere. This is messed up. And if it keeps up, there won't be any other inhabitants left than druids. Why are druids, like, such a bad guy in this game? It's weird. No one likes druids. This was not supposed to be read correctly. Look at all that moonshine. I'm a bad person even though I don't eat meat. Does that make mean I'm unique? Sure, why not? You know what? Everyone in chat is ethical and moral today. So says the simple. I think we've just found Bob's Chop Shop. All this for moon juice. Ugh. And you drank that. After this horrifying experience, our heroes stood determined to bring the Archdruid to justice. Unshrouded light. Uh, oh. Up we go. I'm special. Oh, we finished a chapter. Um, should I do the last one because it's probably a boss? Or should I just, like, move on? Feature segment. I really haven't heard of abuse in the meat industry unless it's like mistreating animals that are intended for the drop, tr chopping b block. Uh, well, big ethical enjoyer of. <laughs> Get the heck out of here, bud. I'm gonna I'm gonna quit because I did two hours. Missed one third of the chest, an entire save point. What's this game called? This is called Steam World Quest Hand of Gilgamesh. And we are slowly approaching the last chunk of the game. <laughs>